Hi, in this quick video, we're going to discuss about the MongoDB. MongoDB is a NoSQL database and particularly used for the non-relational data, which is extremely used for handling the large data. Because of this feature, most of the popular companies are using MongoDB. MongoDB is particularly store the data in NoSQL format. Now let us deep dive understand what is difference between the NSQL and NoSQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, whereas NoSQL is a not only Structured Query Language. SQL is used for the relational database, whereas NoSQL is used for a non-relational database. But however, there is a misconception is there that non-relational database can't handle the relational database, but it's wrong. We can also handle the relational data even in the non-relational database too. However, the way they're storing the data is different. Now let us go further down and try to understand what is SQL and relational database. When it comes to SQL, let us consider a user table. Let us consider a user table as shown here. And what we have is the data that is stored in rows and columns. Rows are something the records of the, of the user. Whereas a column which will define the field or information about the user. And in this case, the fields are ID, first name, last name, email, address, and phone number. And here we have the basic information of the person, first name is Arjun. Now let's say if you want to add the one more information to this, to the user table, let's say email to, so person can have the multiple emails. Now let's say if I add the email to, and this will look something like this. All we, do, all we need, all we did is just add one column and name it as email to. And similarly, let's say if we have the email three and just simply add the email three. Now the real problem comes when we actually start updating the records. Let's say if we update one more record of different user for Sharma, and it is not necessarily that every person have the multiple emails. And let's say for, for Mr. Sharma is having only one email, but he's not having the email two and email three, and which is a blank. And similarly, this is also case for having the address too. Users can also have the multiple address and multiple phone numbers also. Now again, let's say if you keep on adding the more and more records and let this is what it looks like. And what happens is this, this user table is become and blown up with the empty fields and it's becoming a problem again. Now, in order to solve this problem, the relational database came into the picture. Now, instead of storing all the information in one single user table, we can split the table into multiple tables. Let's say define this as a user table. In user table, what we have is ID, first name and last name. And whereas we have an email ID or email table, which will actually store the email information of the person and followed by the IDs and also user ID. And similarly, the address and also the phone number. Now, whenever you want to extract the information of the one user, what we want is that we need to join the tables or we need to join the multiple tables in order to extract one information. And this is how the relational database will work. One table is having the relationship with other table and these two tables can be joined with the ID. So this is the overview of understanding of relation database. Now let us try to understand how the NoSQL or non-relationship database will work, which is NoSQL, not only structured query language. And when it comes to the NoSQL databases, we are having the four types of database key value, 
white column, graph, and document. MongoDB is a document database. So we're going to discuss mostly about the document database here. In document database, whatever the information that we have, table, rows, and columns, which is actually there in the SQL, and typically those are saved in document. A document can be a JSON, which is a JavaScript object notation. Whereas in MongoDB, we typically save this in BSON. BSON is a binary JavaScript object notation, which means we are saving the information in different data types. Now, let's look into the what is a JSON structure and try to understand how we represent the rows and tables in a document. So the typical structure of the document will look something like this. What we have is key and value. Every document is a, or a JSON is actually started or we can create a JSON within the curly braces and followed by a key and value is separated by a colon and then we have a value. This value can be in a string or can be in a numeric or the numbers. If it is a number, you don't need to put the information in the string, just like what we have in value. And could also be a array or a list. Let's say if we have the multiple information, just like our phone numbers or address or even the email address where we have the multiple information and those information we can put in a list. The value can be the one more object itself or one more document itself. So this is how the typical structure of the JSON. Now, how we can represent the record to the document. Let's say we have a one record of a user. Now, how we typically put this information in document? The document is nothing but JSON. So let's say if we have the record, something for an Arjun, we have an ID, first name, last name, email, email two, email three, address, address two, phone, and phone two. So what are the fields that was there, or what are the column names or typically our fields or fields in the JSON? And the record values are the values in the JSON or document. So here you can see that ID is one, and ID is our key and the value is one. And the first name is basically the key and the value we put it in Arjun and so on. And when it comes to the email address, which is actually we are having the three information and we can put the all the three information in a string, sorry, in a list. And similarly in the case of address and phone number. So this is how a typical a document is created from the record. And let's say if we consider a table, let's say you have a table like this and we can also have the multiple documents. For example, record one will become one document, record two is another document, record three is another document and the collection of documents is typically represented in as a table. Now let's try to look into the terminologies between SQL and NoSQL. When looking at the terminology's point of view, we typically have the cluster in both. Basically, the server will run in a cluster and we have a database, it's same even in the SQL and NoSQL. But however, the difference comes from here. The table in SQL will become a collection or collection of documents and uh, each and every table have a rows and that is called a document and column is actually the field. So this is what the typical difference or terminologies that we'll usually use in NoSQL, particularly in the MongoDB. Okay, now hope you understand the difference between the SQL and NoSQL. Now let's a quick go through the ecosystem of in MongoDB. MongoDB is a very big and having the lots of tools that we can use in MongoDB. When it comes to the MongoDB ecosystem, there are several tools that was available for our purpose. Let's look into some of the tools that was popularly used. 
First is a MongoDB self-hosted. This option is available to host your MongoDB server on your hardware. This requires you to manage your server, update, and do any kind of maintenance by your own. All you to do is download the open source community server and install it in your hardware and you can use it for free. MongoDB Atlas. If you don't want to go a old school route on managing your own server, then you need MongoDB Atlas. Atlas uses a software as a service approach and it is a global cloud database as a service for modern application. With that, you can fully deploy and manage the MongoDB across the popular best-in-class automation cloud services like AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. MongoDB Compass. Compass is a UI for the MongoDB available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Compass allows you to visualize explore your data in its UI. You can also run the ad hoc queries in seconds. Interact with the data with full CRUD functionalities like create, read, update, and delete. View and optimize your query performance. And finally, make a small decisions about indexing, document validations, and much more functionalities is there in MongoDB Compass. And next we have is the MongoDB Atlas Search. Atlas Search make it easy to build fast, relevant, full text search capabilities on top of your data and cloud. It is available exclusively with MongoDB Atlas. And also we have the MongoDB Chat. MongoDB Chat is a modern data visualization tool that integrates with the MongoDB cloud platform. Charts is a quick and easiest way to visualize the MongoDB, MongoDB data, or perform some real-time insights and analytics can be easily done with these charts. So this is the overview of the MongoDB ecosystem and also the difference between the SQL and NoSQL and how the document is different from the tables or records and etc. Hope you understand this. In the next lesson, we're going to talk more about the MongoDB in hands-on. I will see you on that. Until then, happy learning.